When it comes to wine packaging, choosing the right label for your product with your perfectly designed label is essential in order to stand out among other products. In this video, we would like to go through a few points that you may want to consider before you finalize your choices and designs with your supplier. Wine glasses come in different sizes, 187ml, 375ml, 500ml, the standard 750ml, 1.5 litres, 3 litres and 6 litres. Depending on your target audiences, 187 or 375 ml can be great for gifts or single serving size to accompany a solo meal, for example airlines and restaurants. 500 ml bottles are another format that lends itself to a variety of uses such as fortifieds or sweet dessert style products. They are no longer produced domestically, however can still be sourced from overseas suppliers if you require them. Call ProWine and we can help you with your inquiry. With 750ml bottles being the standard, anything larger than that are often used for display purposes or for promotional activities. Magnums, 1500ml, are very popular with collectors and for special occasion giving. Today, bottles are provided in a variety of colour options to enhance not only the wine's appearance, but to match up with label and capsule designs. The two standard colours for red and white table wines today come in two well-known alternatives, being French green and antique green, as shown here in the video. There are also other variants including amber, popular with Riesling, and emerald or dark green, most often used with red wines. Clear or flint, these are popular for winemakers who want to show off the colour of the wine. Flint as a colour is very popular for rosé style wines and young white wines highlighting the vibrant, youthful colours of each product. Arctic Blue is a variant on flint with a subtle degree of light blue tint. They are relatively expensive but can provide a vibrant and colourful option. They are usually associated with a crisp, fresh white wine or dessert wine. Bottle shapes are easily grouped into four categories. Claret bottles have pronounced high shoulders and are most often associated with reds. They often have a deep punt on the bottom of the bottle. The punt is supposed to hold sediment when the wine is poured or decanted. However, most of the wines today are filtered before bottling and as such the punt has taken on more of a symbolic nature. Burgundy bottles have less pronounced or sloping shoulders and are commonly used for Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, etc. They too often have a punt and come most often in French green as a colour. Their history is traditionally associated with Chardonnay, although today many other popular white wines such as Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Gris often use them as well. The Riesling bottle is tall and slender and are usually used for Riesling and dessert wines. This bottle most often comes in antique green and amber colours. There are also reverse taper bottles. The bottles are slightly wider at the shoulder than they are at the bottom. These bottles are used mostly in the premium end of the market due to their unique look. Their high tendency to tip on the bottling line also makes them harder to deal with. Once you've chosen the perfect bottle for your product, let's move on to labels. There is a considerable amount of knowledge required behind choosing the right material and size to ensure that it can be applied to the bottle correctly. There are a few factors that you will need to consider before finalizing your label design. When you are talking to your designer about your labels, you have to make sure that the dimensions of the labels don't go outside the bottle's label panel, the area designed to accommodate the label by the bottle manufacturer. It may be possible to put a slightly out of spec label onto a given bottle, but you risk the finish of the label being compromised with creases and bubbles. WPA, Wine Packages of Australia Association, have recently designed a web application that allows you to choose your bottle from drop-down lists and key in your proposed label dimensions and it will immediately show whether it will work on your chosen glass. Choosing your label paper stock, it is necessary that the surface area of the paper is sufficiently sealed with moisture, repelling varnish, in order to reduce the risk of bubbling or lifting. Also, a minimum 80 GSM and maximum 135 GSM paper stock with under laminate should be used to make sure it will run smoothly on the bottling line. A good designer and label printer should be able to assist you with your choice and it is always a good idea to consult the bottling line that will run the product to get their expert opinion as well. 
embellishments create texture in a label and it could make your label stand out from your competitors. However, this may create an uneven adhesive surface on the back of the label. As a result, this may increase the risk of bubbling or creasing after label application. Again, as with paper selection, it is a good idea to discuss any of these options with your printer and bottling line operator. There are also a number of legal industry requirements that you need to be aware of before you start talking to your label suppliers. ProWine suggests you to visit sizemeup.com.au for more information and we always welcome our customers to ask questions if they are not sure about their designs. Thank you for watching this video again and we hope this will give you some insights for your next product design.